McDonald starting lineups. Up front along with Duncan of Bruce Bowen and Fabricio Alberto. At the guards, Tony Parker and Michael Finley. Finley back as a starter with Manu Ginobili to come off the bench. Greg Popovich telling us he's looking to Ginobili to provide a lift with the second unit. And for the Lakers, Kobe Bryant, who figures to be somewhat more assertive in the first half in the backcourt with Derek Fisher. Derek looking to turn it from the one for nine on the front line as Lamar Odom, Vladimir Rodmanovich, and Paul Gasol. And we're ready to go. The officials been at Salvatore working with Ken Mauer and Tony Brothers. It'll be Duncan and Gasol. And the lights just went out. Not a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> and the lighting here, it should be pointed out, pointed out, is usually among the best in the league. It is truly Hollywood style. All right, let's see if the lights stay on. That was quite dramatic, I thought. Lakers control. The ball in the hands of Lamar Odom. Bryant, played by Bowen. Gasol guarded by Duncan. Oda being watched by Alberto. Here's the spin, and he's able to take it to the pocket. Lamar Odom not able to get going. The other night, just 3 of 12 from the field. Yeah, Phil Jackson told us before the game that he was going to go to him early, get that drive going to the basket. The other night, he was looking for too many fouls. He talked about looking to create contact rather than finishing his shots. Duncan with a driving hook. Rebound swept by Odom. And the Lakers looking to get off to a better start than what we saw the other night. That counts in the foul. Derek Fisher taken to the rim. He got the step, and he's headed to the line. Well, these are the two guys now, Mark, that were 4 for 21 the other night in game one, struggled, and here they are both with terrific starts. Derek Fisher so strong and so powerful, so you see Phil Jackson's game plan. Go to his two veteran guys here early in the game, and they both start out with layups, Marvin. When you are a guy who struggled in a game before, you love to see those easy baskets early. And Doug, for the Spurs in game one, a very difficult loss blowing that 20-point lead and let it get away the question is how will the Spurs react to such a disheartening defeat now Greg Poppy said we're gonna have to show tremendous mental toughness because like in his words it was a crushing game that you have to try to put behind you that's what their experience hopefully will do is uh, Parker misses the jump shot Kobe Bryant on the first half in game one, attempting only three shots, one for three from the field, and then came on strong in the second half. Gasol has to give it back. Odom, just looking to get out of the paint. Gasol, and Duncan able to reach for I think the Spurs would like to push the ball a little bit more tonight. They got very stagnant, get some early offense. Mark, they didn't get any easy baskets the other night. They've got to find some easy scores against this Laker defense that's very underrated. A Laker team that during the playoffs is averaging 112 per game. Tim Duncan with a nice spin move. And Duncan able to get off in the first half in game one. Finishing up, as we mentioned, with the 30 points. Control the boards. Bowen able to stay with Bryant, who's able now to hit over Alberto. Well, Marv, you talked about it. Kobe was not going to wait as long as he did the other night. His team got down by 20. Very fortunate he could dig out of that hole with his team. Tonight he's going to look to be a little bit more aggressive early for his shot. Alberto off the good look from Duncan. Lakers with a 7-4 lead. We're just underway. Game two of this best of seven Western Conference Final. The scene will shift to San Antonio for games three and four. And the entire Western Conference Final will be seen exclusively here on TNT. Gasol. And the rebound is handled by Finley. Michael Finley the other night. 0 for 5 from the field. All five attempts from three-point range. And four of those in the fourth quarter when nobody could find a basket for the uh, San Antonio Spurs. But the Spurs just 3 for 21 in that fourth quarter. Duncan! On the follow. No, no rotation that time on the weak side by Vladi Romanovich. Remember now, Vladi Romanovich got up to a wonderful start the other night. Five of five. All of his field goals came in that first quarter. And then did not attempt another shot the rest of the way. Romanovich. Well, through the four. That's his first bucket. 
Burrow's not getting any stops here at the start. It's a 9-6 lead. And the Lakers, beautiful move by Parker. Rebounded by Romanovic. Fisher got the step again, and Finley called for the foul. Well, Michael Finley just does not have that lateral movement that he had as a younger player, and Derek Fisher recognizing that. What happens with Tony Parker in many instances, uh, Marv, is when he drives to the basket, he falls down. And so he's underneath the basket, and now all of a sudden, somebody's trying to pick up the point guard. In that situation, it was Michael Finley, and Fisher had the advantage he's going to get to the foul line. And Fisher has come out in aggressive fashion. So Derek with point number four. Let's check in with Craig Sager. Craig. Well, Marv, you mentioned that the lights flickered just as we had the opening tip. You also complimented the Lakers on their Hollywood lights here. In fact, this is the only arena that has that type of system. It was installed two years ago, an incandescent light system. If this would have been any other arena or even a Clippers game, they would have had to turn the lights off for 15 minutes as they cooled down and then came up. But with these lighting systems, they can turn right back on. It's one of a kind. Well, we could have had a problem. Super Hugo, the Hornet mascot, is not even in the building. <laughs> Lakers up 11-6 with four minutes gone by in the first. Parker protecting the ball. Beautiful move. He's able to go glass. Oh, he's so good at getting his body into the shot blocker. Mar, that's what you want to do so the guy cannot jump, and then you get that little floater at the basket. Bryant. Oh, oh he went glass. That not his intention. Little pump a shot maneuver by Kobe Bryant. Uh, Lakers in a much better rhythm tonight offensively, and I thought that Kobe passed up some shots in the first half. Phil Jackson said he thought he passed up about five and got his team out of rhythm in that first half. Lakers have hit five of the first seven from the field. Duncan. Hold him on it. Lakers playing at a, a much faster clip than we saw the other night in the first half. Romanovic. Cannot hit the three. Duncan able to outrace Odom, and he's trapped, but gets it ahead to Parker. A nice job, though. They he forced the pass to be made at a slower tempo, and they were able to get back defensively. Fisher took it away from Parker. There's Fisher going all the way. Trying to draw the foul. Does a somersault along the baseline. It's a five-on-four for San Antonio. Finley from downtown. Well, that's why he's in the game. And that time it was Derek Fisher that fell down. And now that the San Antonio Spurs had numbers. And that's what Greg Popovich was hoping for, that Finley would get some of those shots early in the game and then maybe be able to make them later. Bryant for three way off. And Parker lets it go. Well, we're just about at the halfway mark of the first quarter, and Greg Popovich will send on Mato Ginobili for Michael Finley. So Finley hits a three, but he'll head to the bench. Well, I think you've seen Greg Popovich do this through the years. Anytime he feels like the team needs a change, either he moves Ginobili in the starting lineup or he moves him to the bench. He's hoping to create some energy and some bench scoring to a bench that was very anemic the other night, having only 11 points. Mato just three of 13 from the field. And in game one, and as you had mentioned, does look to be worn down. He's playing with that uh, ankle injury, foul on Gasol, and uh, that'll put Duncan at the line. Hey, you can log on to TNT Overtime on NBA.com and vote each quarter for the Spur and Laker players that you want to watch side by side in a unique internet and television experience exclusive to TNT Overtime and NBA. Com. Getting back to Mato Ginobili along with that jam left ankle in the series against the Hornets. He ripped a nail on his finger on a shooting hand and has an acrylic cover over it to protect it. You know, Mark, we were talking at the production meeting this morning. I said he sort of reminds me of an electric car. He goes as long as he can go, and then he just runs out of juice, and you got to park it and plug it in and, and recharge the batteries. And I think they're hoping that tonight, with an extra day's rest, that he's been able to maybe recharge those batteries. I think he's the guy that makes the team special. When he is playing well, they play well. I know you're spending a lot of time with the grandkids. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Odom, offensive foul, says Benna Salvatore. This is a little bit what he did the other night when he was talking about trying to create contact. 
you know, trust that little medium range jump shot off the glass. Oberto was just waiting for him there, and he takes the offensive foul. Odom's going to trust that little medium range jump shot. Ginobili is wide open for three. Rebounded by Odom. Here comes Fisher again, puts the speed on, and scores! Well, Derek Fisher has come out all fired up. He now has seven points. Well, when you play the Lakers, you better get back. Transition defense. Took a little fake timeout here. Now Tony Parker finally takes it. But the Lakers are a quick-hitting team, Marv. It's just not the rhythm of the triangle offense anymore. They look for early offense. They got good speed and quickness. Kobe Bryant here off the glass. He's off to a good speed. Two of the best of seven as we check out Collins Keys presented by Heineken Light. Well, San Antonio, they had like the same script, but with a different ending. They were outscored 44 to 20 that last 20 or uh, 17 plus minutes. Six for 30 field goals. Ginobili, an energy surge. Can he bring that tonight? They so feed off of it. And the Los Angeles Lakers, Kobe, feel the game. That's what he talked about doing the other night where he had the huge second half, 25 points. And then Odom and a Fisher, a bounce back game. We've already seen that tonight. Two for Odom, the first basket of the game. Seven for Fisher. So they already have nine points, 12 in game one. And in the first half, on Wednesday night, Fisher and Bryant have combined one for seven for just two points, and that bucket by Kobe came late in the first half. Robert Ory has come on, the one-time Laker. Greg Popovich telling us that he will go to Ory early and may stay with him much longer uh, then we have seen uh, Robert in this uh, postseason run. Or he sets up down low against Gasol. Shot clock to three. And uh, Parker lost it. Not a good sequence by the Spurs. Well, you can see the Lakers are trying to keep Parker out of that lane. They're pushing him down the sideline and then looking to trap him. As Oda makes his move. Foul is called. It was on Ori, a blocking foul. You know, Marv, a lot of times, you know, with a screen and no defense, you'll push the ball down to the baseline. It's sort of what I call corral it. Well, with Parker and Ginobili, when they push it down that way, they're looking to trap it and make that then a tough pass for him to make down and out of that corner. That time, the ball slipped out of his hands. And, uh, uh, Marv, you talked about Robert Ori, only five minutes really in game one. And what he gives you is great spacing. If he can make that shot, then he gives those guys, when they drive to the basket, that big man can't be back in the lane to help as much. It also helps Duncan in the post. This is a pick and roll defense. Now watch Gasol here. They're going to shove this down baseline and watch him go. He stays aggressively in the trap. The Lakers then basically zone the play up. That time the ball slipped out of his hands, but you see they're trying to take away any passing lanes and keep Tony Parker out of the middle of the floor where he does so much damage. Lakers up by six. A Laker team that has won nine of 11 of the postseason. They swept Denver, beat Utah in six, followed by the game one win over San Antonio. They are 6-0 and oh at home here in L.A. in the playoffs and have not lost at home since March the 28th. Bowen for three. So Bruce Bowen once again gets that open look from the corner and is able to cash in. And that's why you have shooters on the floor. you got both uh, weak side guys can shoot the ball. The Lakers trapped the post somebody's going to be open and Bowen had a good shooting game the other night five of eight from the field good job by the Spurs Bryant lost it Bowen hit the deck helped up by uh, Ori looks like he took a shot to the chin well, when you play Kobe he's going to diss out some punishment Michael Jordan was the same way looked like he got an elbow to the chin inadvertently but uh, Kobe's going to punish you yeah, right there is the uh, plays the ball slips out of his hands and Phil Jackson officially call, affectionately calls him Edward Scissorhands. Uh, yes, Kobe has a, a different point of view about <laughs> being played by Bowen because of Bowen's aggressive uh, style of hands-on defense. That's a tie-up jump ball. And now Jacques Vaughn will uh, check in. Greg Popovich telling us that he would go to Vaughn 
in the first half. Wants to provide more rest for Tony Parker. And he's sort of kicking himself when he, when he talked to us before the game. He said, you know, we had that 20-point lead in the third quarter, and I should have got Tony a little rest. The Lakers started that run. I left him on the floor, and he said, I thought he got a little tired in the fourth quarter. So he's hoping Jock Vaughn uh, can limit some of the load of the minutes for Tony Parker, and he'll be fresher in the fourth quarter. Same with Ginobili and Duncan. We'll, so we'll see, Marv, if the Spurs stay close enough to where that will make an, uh, uh, a difference in the fourth period. So, another jump ball. Called by uh, the outside of fifth with Ken Mauer. Controlled by Bryant. Beautiful pass. And then uh, Odom trying to get it to Gasol. That's overpassing. I always said when you catch the ball in there, you're a shooter, Mark. You catch the ball in the lane, it's, it's too much of a congested quarters to try to pass. Ginobili attempting another three. Nice box out by Odom. Just under four to play in this first quarter. Odom. The shot is there for the rebound, but a foul. Loose ball foul on the Lakers. It's on Gasol. If we watch Lamar Odom all on his drives, I call it broad jumping. He's jumping and laying himself out at the basket rather than high jumping, rather than get great lift. So he's laying himself out at the basket. He's got to go up strong and, and, and not lay himself out there at the rim. He's missing a lot of easy shots. The foul Gasol, the second foul, takes a seat, and Roni Turiaf replaces Gasol. Turiaf defending on uh, Duncan with help. You see Romanovic coming over, going for the ball. They try to trap him. Vaughn hesitates, and then takes the shot. It's a little bit uh, like uh, Ray John Rondo for Boston. When he's on the floor, they're going to make him make jump shots. So he's got to be prepared and ready to shoot the ball. He's worked very hard on his shooting to make those open shots. Odin twisting his way. Nice, nice job by Duncan coming over on the help defense. The Laker lead is now one with three minutes left in this first quarter. Marv Albert, Doug Collins, great Sager from Los Angeles. And the call is away from the ball. It is against the Lakers, which could be Kuriak. And now a timeout is taken. Just under three to go in this first quarter. Shot Vaughn measuring and then hits. He played good defense, but was only one for three on the offensive end. But in the second half, he switched to his Black Mamba. Kobe says the Black Mamba can strike with 99% accuracy at maximum speed and rapid succession. And that's the type of basketball precision he wanted in the second half. Tonight, he is starting out with a Black Mamba. You know, Doug, it doesn't get any better than when... Craig brings props with him. And especially shoes, because yes. who knows shoes better than Craig Sager? Exactly. Lakers up by one. With just under three minutes to play in this first quarter, Sasha Vujicic has come out. He played very well the other night, particularly in defending against Ginobili, but a foul is called. Fourth team foul on the Lakers, and it's on Vujicic. You know, we were talking to Phil before the game. I said, Phil, do you, do you think that Vujicic's personality bothers Ginobili? And he goes, that's why I put him on him. And I said, so it's like one ear to, to the next kind of thing. He says, exactly right. So let's watch that matchup. Vujicic uh, wants that challenge and did a good job the other night with it. And it's in effect two guys who just like to annoy each exactly other. Exactly right. Our ball has stepped out of bounds, so the ball back to the Lakers. Jordan Farmar has also checked in, so it's a backcourt now of Farmar and Vujicic. And Farmar, who had struggled with the shot against the Jazz, uh, two for five, eight points, played well in game one. Churiak up front with Odom and Bryant. Nice pass play from Churiak. That's a great look by Turioff. He brings so much energy off that bench. He loves the challenge of trying to play Duncan, although he's undersized. And during the season, he blocked a couple shots, so Duncan is aware of that when he uh, dribbles in that post. Turioff at about six foot nine, providing problems here for Duncan, who went to the crossover. Rebound only. Nobody missed a couple from downtown. Gets it out to Ori. Shoots for two and way off. Turiaf looking to pick off Bowen. Odom lost it. 
And the question is, was it last touched by Ginobili? Yes, it was. This last Robert Ory miss, Marv, I'm not sure if he was trying to shoot it in or bank it. It was almost like he was somewhere in between, and that was uh, that was an ugly shot right there. That was going to hit the corner of the board. That is batted out of bounds by uh, Bowen. Here's Fabricio Alberto coming back. And he'll come on for Duncan. These with four points, four rebounds. Both coaches doing lots of shuffling here in the first quarter, as they did the other night. Here is Bryant, rebounded by Kenobi. It'll be three of five here at the start. And that's exactly what Bowen wants to do. He wants to force him on the floor, keep his body in the front of him, and make him a jump shooter, not let him get in the paint and get to the foul line. Well, Ori not discouraged by that last shot, fired up at three. My kind of guy. This next one can't wait to shoot the second one. Here's Bryant. In contrast to what took place in game one, where he did not hit his first field goal until the final minute of the first half. He has come out shooting. Bowen. Good box out by Curry off that recovered. Here's Vujicic. Oh, Bowen picks off the pass. Ginobili's going to have to get busy with this group on the floor. They have no other scores. So Ginobili's going to have to look for his offense. You've got Robert Ory who's going to spot up and look for his shot. He and Bowen. But Jock Vaughn's really not a score. Neither is Alberto. So Ginobili's got to get to work here with this group. Shot clock to seven. Vaughn for three. What happens when you get a lineup out there that you don't have the shooters? The ball always finds the guy who's not the high percentage shooter. That's not by accident, Marv. That's why the work that these coaches do when they prepare their teams, they know where they can help, who they want to help off of, and that's why a series becomes so interesting. You force a team to try to play to its weakness. There are reasons that certain players are wide open. Exactly. On a regular basis. And now Tony Parker. He's looking to check back in. And uh, let's see, now Finley will come on for Ori. See, the Lakers have gone to a small lineup, so Michael Finley's out there to match up against uh, Romanovich. Parker was called back. He was at the, the scorer's table. Four-second differential between the game clock and shot clock. This uh, first quarter coming to a close. Lakers in possession. They lead by five. Farmar. Bryant lost it. Vaughn diving for it. And a timeout is called by Vaughn with 6.2 left in the first quarter. A oh, nice job that time by Bruce Bowen. He had to sort of help on that screen and then get back to Kobe. And once again, those active hands that we have talked about with Bruce Bowen knocked that ball loose and uh, helped his team there get a possession. Doug, we were talking a moment ago about Phil Jackson referring to Bruce Bowen as Edward Scissorhands because of Bowen's aggressive style of, of the hands-on uh, defense. Well, our graphic designer extraordinaire from inside the NBA, uh, Alex <laughs> Rubers, has come up with his version of Bruce Bowen slash Edward Scissorhands. You know, Marv, I showed this to him before game one. I said, Bruce, I've got something for you. Come over. Yeah. He looked at the monitor right, and watch is. his reaction to this. Watch him look at this. This is, I mean, he loved this. He laughed for about two minutes. Loved Edward Scissorhands. Bruce apparently enjoying Alex's artwork. <laughs> well, those guys do a great job in the studio, don't they? They are so good. Down to 6.2 to go in this first quarter. Lakers with a 21-16 lead. Jacques Vaughn off that uh, scramble for the loose ball, taking a timeout. So San Antonio will put it in play in their backcourt. Amarv, after a 27-point first quarter in game one, the Spurs struggled to get 85 points. Tonight they have 16. So, I mean, it's going to be a struggle for them to score in this series. Their defense is going to have to be tremendous. All right, here comes Ginobili. That's by the trap. Traveling violation. Good job by the combination of Vujicic and Romanovic. See the trap. They're coming over to give help, and that's a good call. Manu did 
shuffle those feet. So now the Lakers are going to get it back. And let's see if, uh, you know, is Kobe Bryant resting here? Yeah, he's being out of the game here. So the shot obviously will not be run for him. Al Gasol has come on, as has Luke Walton for the first time. And now the Spurs will go with Kurt Thomas. Now, watch Gasol on this play. Phil's got a play. He likes to throw it up here right to Gasol. Walton will inbound. Here's Palmar, and the foul is given. a foul to give. Vaughn was able to chase down Farmar. There's still plenty of time though. 1.5 seconds. I mean, you can get a catch, a dribble, and a shot in that period of time. So the Lakers still in a position here. If they execute this play, they can get a good shot. And Walton again throws in. And Vujicic lost the handle. So that is the end of the first quarter. The Lakers with a 21-16 lead over the Spurs. Ryan, four of six from the field, eight points fast start for Fisher. He has seven. Tim Duncan, four points. Four. Well, Mono played six and a half minutes in the first quarter. Missed both shots, both three-point attempts. How about the Spurs without a point the last three minutes, 20 seconds, and Doug only two points in the last four minutes, 45 seconds. Well, Marv, they're playing great defense. They forced six turnovers in the last six minutes of that quarter, but the Spurs have no points off those turnovers. So you've got to start having your defense create some offense. We already talked about easy scores, and the Spurs aren't finding any of those right now. San Antonio just 7 of 21 from the field in the first quarter. Michael Finley with his second field goal. See, I like this lineup here with Parker, Ginobili at the guards, and Finley at the small forward. But with Ori, they've got a good shooting group out there and a chance, I think, to score some points against the second unit. Walton gets inside. Kobe Bryant setting it out, getting a rest. He opened up, hitting four of six from the field. Eight points. Parker is turned back and foul, so Parker will head to the line. Foul on Walton. I've always said when you play the Lakers and Kobe goes out of the game, you see Kobe over there resting now and Derek Fisher, you've got to take advantage of him resting. You've got to try to make, make a little push here. And let's see if the uh, Spurs can do that. The Lakers were able to make a run, actually, when their bench came in in the second quarter of game one. San Antonio's missed all three of its free throws. National coverage of the NBA playoffs continues tomorrow on ABC. Game three between the Celtics and the Pistons starting at 8 o'clock Eastern time. That series all even at 1. Sunday here on TNT. Game three of the Western Conference Finals between these Lakers and Spurs starting at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And then Monday on ESPN as uh, Parker comes up with a steal and takes it the distance. How dare the game interrupt a promotional announcement. <laughs> Monday on ESPN. And it's game four of the Celts and Pistons starting at 7.30 Eastern time. Well, finally two points off a steal and a turnover. There. That's what the Spurs have to do. Vujicic. Sasha Vujicic, who has had an outstanding season out of Slovenia. First round draft pick back in 2004. Played in Italy for three years. It's his fourth season of the NBA. Ginobili not able to hit, and it's deflected out last touch by Vujicic. Well, the improvement of Vujicic, he's always been a guy who's been very streaky offensively. But Marv, the reason he's playing now is because his teammates trust him defensively. I heard Kobe speaking about it the, the, after the game the other night that his him his improvement defensively has really enabled him to help them play in a game like this against Ginobili. There it is right there. The irritant involved with the irritant <laughs> and Ginobili call for the foul and we say that with great effect. Absolutely and you see he has the speed and quickness and the size to stay up with Manu Ginobili especially Manu who is uh, struggling with that jammed ankle. Lakers have a 25-21 lead. Walton rebounded by Alberto. Ginobili met by the double momentarily. It'll give and go, and Ginobili pops it back out for Parker. 
Ori has been off. Yeah, he's not been close. It's not the same Robert Ori, obviously, that used to knock down all those open jump shots. Age has taken its toll. Farmar. Ori gets inside. And a foul. Let's check it with Craig. Oh, Marv, just a second ago, we saw Sasha Vujicic draw that offensive foul against Manu Ginobili. He actually thought he drew one against Bruce Bowen in game one. Bowen at the bottom of the screen catches Vujicic with the forearm and the elbow. He went down. The Lakers thought a flagrant foul should have been called. The tape was sent to uh, the senior vice president of basketball operations, Stu Jackson, New York. I talked to him tonight. He said the officials missed the call. It should have been a foul, but he did not feel that it warranted a flagrant, flagrant or a fine. But uh, Bowen also had five fouls in that game. That could have been a uh, costly addition because obviously he has to guard Kobe Bryant and he had to come out with the four and then the fifth foul later in the game. But, all right, thanks, Craig. That was point number five for... Odom, the foul by Oberto, who will sit down, and uh, Tim Duncan makes his return. Well, just to follow up on Craig's report, the importance of Bruce Bowen to play against Kobe Bryant. When Bruce Bowen picked up his third foul the other day, they were 20 points ahead. Kobe scored 23 of his 27 points after that happened. So that's the importance of keeping Bowen on the floor to try to keep him somewhat under wraps. Five-point lead for the Lakers. We're early second quarter. The Lakers continue to do a nice job against Parker, and a defensive three-second violation is called. Yeah. Mark, Mark, they're cutting off the floor. They're, they're, they're keeping the Spurs guards on the side of the floor, and when you do that and don't let them get in the middle, then you don't get that penetrating kick game, those open threes on the weak side of the floor. So the, the Lakers have done a nice job with Parker and Ginobili, especially especially after the first half of game one. I thought in game one, Parker was terrific in the first half. He had 12 points and really controlled the tempo of that game. Struggled in the second half, had only six points, and he and Ginobili were 0 for 7 in that decisive fourth quarter. Parker and Finley now in the backcourt. Duncan Ori and Ibe Udoka up front. Udoka coming on for the first time. Did not play well in game one after a terrific series against the Hornets, but opens up by hitting the three. It's so important for those guys coming off the bench to make shots. It just helps their confidence. Oh, my. Look Wolf with the lob that is put down by Lamar Odom. Three-point Laker lead, three minutes in. Second quarter, here's Finley. Duncan reaching for it and a foul. And it's Salvatore, the outside official. Holding the foul on Curia. And that leads to a timeout. There's the lob from Walton to Odom. Usually you see Bryant working that with Gasol and Kobe saying, nice job. And Jacques Vaughn saying after the game, he felt that San Antonio lost its composure, which was surprising because of the experience on this ball club going up against a, a relatively young Laker team. And, and Manu Ginobili said, we looked slow at the end of that game. He said, we, we, we were not there. Here's a bad play here right out of the timeout. Greg Popovich says, don't play in a crowd. And they come out and throw the ball in the crowd on the first possession. Not a good play. Kobe Bryant back on the floor. Farmer and Vujicic remain on the backcourt. Bryant up front with Gasol. And Walton. Here's Udoka coming over to help on Bryant. Gives it up. Walton shoots a three. Rebounded by Duncan. See, Brent Berry's on the floor right now with Ginobili struggling and Robert Ory being 0 for 6, 0 for, 0 for 4 from 3, looking for someone maybe to make a shot here for his team. Ime Yudoka able to connect on his first attempt just a moment ago, and that was from three-point land. Barry gets it right back for Finley. Just to beat the shot clock. Here comes Farmar. Lakers on the run. Farmar all the way. Jordan Farmar, second-year player out of UCLA, who has had a very strong season. Did not play well as we touched on earlier in the series against Utah. Did not find the touch. Parker right back. And that's the first clear penetration we've seen for Tony Parker. Well, instead of doing it off the screen roll, they're trying to get movement. We talked about how uh, well the Lakers have played all those screen rolls that time. Just get some movement and some cutting. Far 
Come on. Showing his confidence, attempting that three-point shot. Parker. Udoka from downtown, way off. And Gasol is on it. The three-point shooting is so important to the Spurs. They were five for 20 in game one tonight. Now three of 10. And this after shooting very well from three-point range against the Hornets last couple of games. Bryant not able to connect. Here comes Barry with Vujicic back. Udoka rejected from behind by Ballmar. Gasol. Udoka with the rebound. I think Udoka felt like he was all alone there, did not hear the footsteps from behind. You've got to go up and dunk that basketball. We saw Luke Walton make that same play against Utah. And Darren Williams had a spectacular block. That, excuse me, I know it was um, Ronnie Price had the uh, spectacular block in that game. Shot clock down at three. Parker got on hit, and the Spurs are having their difficulties in one of those routes developing. I mean, you play great defense, and you can't make a shot. That gets discouraging after a while. But Ryan does make the shot. Ten points for Kobe. See, Kobe knows that when Bowen's not in the game, he can score whenever he wants to. That's that old feeling, I know I can score, you know I can score, yes. and you know I know I can score. That's problem. And here's that beautiful defensive play, the hustle by Farmar to reject Udoka from behind. So it's time for Looking Good Today, sponsored by Dockers. And in game one, Kobe Bryant certainly fit the bill. I made the push, and once I made that push, I felt like it could energize us a little bit. Oh, what a move. Guard that. This guy's unbelievable. It's a big win for us, nonetheless, in the Western Conference Finals. Kobe with 25 of his 27 points in the second half. In fact, outscored San Antonio in the fourth quarter as the Lakers came from way back, down by as many as 20 to beat the Spurs, 89 85. Log on to TNT Overtime at NBA.com for more Dockers looking good performance. You know, he had an interesting comment after that game. Already said, you know, I knew we were down 20, but it didn't feel like we were down 20. And I thought it was interesting. He said, I've been in games where when you're down 20, you feel like it. He said, in that game, it did just not feel that way. And uh, uh, he became uh, sort of a prophet with the finish. This after his coach, Phil Jackson, told Craig Sager. But he felt that uh, Kobe was not in the triangle, he was in the Bermuda triangle. <laughs> nice move by, by Parker. San Antonio only two points over the last three and a half minutes uh, prior to that bucket by Parker. Spurs not shooting well, but as uh, Gasol had the step and could not convert. But San Antonio down by just three. As we come up on five minutes to go in this first half. Gasol playing with two fouls. Duncan shoots over him. Try to go glass. That's a shot Greg Popovich said he's going to have to make tonight. That angle bank shot rather than try to back in or try to drive where the, the Lakers are just swarming him. Miscommunication between Bryant and Gasol. This is the great matchup between Kobe and Bowen, and Bowen wants to make him a jump shooter. Try not to let him get to the basket, get to the free throw line. Here he drives inside, gets a little shot to the jaw, and, and again, this one here is the dunk, the little backdoor play, but when you play against these kind of guys, you got to be able to take punishment and dish punishment out, and that's why they both respect each other so much. They're both the ultimate competitors. Duncan going at Gasol. He's trying to pick up number three on Powell. And it's deflected out. Last touch by the Lakers. Greg Popovich has Duncan up front. Along with Bowen and Finley, Ginobili and Parker at the guards. See if Manu Ginobili, I mean, here he is tonight, deep into this game. He still has not scored a point. 0 of 3. They're hoping to bring him off the bench to get a little life. That has not happened. Duncan with the rebound. Duncan again. 
Gasol's got to get his body on him. I know he's very slender, but you've got to get your body, almost face guard Tim Duncan and keep him off the boards, have somebody else get the rebound. Six points, 11 rebounds for Duncan. Bryant, what a move as he was able to extend but could not finish it. Walton picks it off. Parker thought he had Ginobili, did not see Walton. That's a scouting report steal right there. Getting to the passing lane. You know Parker likes to drive and look for those corners. Crossover move by Walton. Bryant passed on the three. Gasol off the fake. Gasol thought he was fouled. That's his first field goal. Gasol just one of five from the floor. He's been in foul trouble. He's playing with two. Parker got the step. They're running some different action. Rather than screen and roll that time, Parker got a handoff coming from the baseline and turned the corner on Duncan. So you make your adjustments, understanding what the Lakers are doing with your screen roll defense to still try to get your guards in the lane off different action. Cody Parker, 11 points. Nine have come here in the second quarter. Bryant for three. 13 points for Kobe. He's hit on 6 of 10 from the floor. But, but see, he's got 13 points on 10 shots, and he's not shot any free throws. So Bowen's doing a good job with him on that. He's making him take shots to get his points. That's what you have to do. And yeah, that's exactly what uh, Greg Popovich uh, wanted to do. Oh, there's that angle bank shot by, yeah, yeah, by yeah. Tim Duncan. Uh, Pop saying he did not want to see Kobe Bryant on the line. As we saw during the course of that uh, series with Utah. Well, you know, Bowen's competitive energy is I want to get up and I want to get tight on him on the perimeter and then he beats you on the drive or gets to the foul line. I mean, you get a hand up in the face, you force a guy to knock down a three, and you can live with that. And then this is a great player making a great shot off the backboard. Just under three to go in this first half, and the Lakers have a 37-35 lead. On the Spurs, as we check the crowd, there's Jack in his customary courtside seat. Denzel Washington, a regular here at the Staples. Rocky Balboa, Sylvester Stallone. To our left, Spider-Man, Toby McGuire. And uh, David and uh, Victoria. Duncan, Mark Spice in the house, though, and Bill <laughs> Abel. That guy's very funny. Yes, I knew you were going to mention about it. The Bill Engvall Show, and this June, show is back. Catch all new episodes of the True Family Comedy, June 12th at 9. Very funny, Mark. Right. Very, very funny. You did mention that. <laughs> There's Bryant again for three. Rebounded by Ginobili. Mark, does it feel like that the Lakers should be up about 10 or 12 points in this game? It's only a two-point game right now. I mean, the Spurs, I think, have been outplayed in this first half. With a good two minutes here, they could go in with the lead. Duncan, he's tied the game. San Antonio shooting only 38%, but the game is tied. Lakers have led right from the start. Bryant goes behind the back. Bowen able to stay with him. Now Bryant with a beautiful setup. That's a handoff to Paul Gasol. That's why they want Bryant to be a jump shooter. He either gets to the foul line or scores or gets others involved when he gets that kind of penetrating drive. A Parker on the spin. What about it by Odom? Boy, Fisher just punished Oberto on that screen. He is a tough guard, I tell you. Bryant has to give it up. Bujicic passed out a three and knocks down the two-pointer. That's a nice job, though. Uh, Ginobili ran him off the three, and you teach a guy, you call out an escape dribble, escape the defender, pull up, and knock that jump shot. A nice play by Bujicic. Lakers have a 41-37 advantage. Got clock to five. There's Parker. That was a wide open shot. 
Williams. Tony Parker's been way off tonight on that jump shot. He's had two or three shots and hasn't been close. Fisher tries to elude. Parker stays with him. Bujicic to three. Oh, he is feeling it. He is three for three from the field. He has seven points. The Laker lead extends to seven. Marvel always talk about closing quarters. It's been L.A. Roberto not able to hit. Here comes Fisher. Ginobili looked to cut him off to bother him. Derek Fisher on the bridge as Ginobili ends up in the second row. Back behind the baseline. Or you just talk about finishing quarters. Looked like the Spurs were going to be close in a 9-0 run here by the Lakers. Just a moment ago, this game was tied at, at 37. It's a two-second differential between the game clock and shot clock. Foul given by Fisher. Both teams, fouls to give. Well, we talked about Derek Fisher and Lamar Odom, how important it would be for them to bounce back after the 4 for 21 combined game. Tonight, Fisher has been terrific. He has nine points. Odom has seven. So they have 16 points. They had 12 the other night. And in the playoffs combined, they've been averaging over 26 points. So these guys have bounced back. And look at this Laker defense, 37 points, Marv. They're a very underrated defensive team. Everybody talks about how many points they score. But their opponents in the playoffs are shooting 43%. Their opponents are shooting 30% from the three-point line. They're averaging almost eight steals and almost seven blocks tonight. So this team has been playing great defense in the playoffs. Bill Jackson pulls out Paul Gasol and sends on Rony Curia. He's defending on Tim Duncan. Final seconds of the half. Duncan is fouled. Fisher tried to slap the ball away, and the Lakers are over the limit. That's a veteran move by Tim Duncan. He brings the ball down low and baits Derek Fisher to try to reach in, and then he drags his arm right through Derek Fisher and gets the foul. That's a, that's a nice play by Tim Duncan. I know Fisher didn't like it, but that's a veteran play. Duncan missed his first two at the line. 73% during the regular season. And a six for six against the Hornets in that game seven. The other night just six for ten. Coming up, it's the T-Mobile halftime report. Only Charles Kenny and Magic. We'll take a look back at this first half. Highlights uh, from this first half with the Lakers pulling away in the last minute and a half after the Spurs. We're able to tie the game. Tim Duncan and uh, Tony Parker, the only Spurs to score the last, what, nine minutes? Is that correct? Our statistician Paul Evans saying the last nine minutes, they scored the last 12 points for San Antonio. Well, they have 10 of these 16 field goals. They are 10 of 23. The rest of the team is 6 for 22. Duncan off the rebound. Not able to hit. He thought he was fouled. That's the end of the first half. Strong finish by the Lakers. And they lead 46 to 37. Another look at that last missed free throw by Duncan. And the question is, was he fouled by Bryant? See, those are two big free throws missed, Marv. It happened in the fourth quarter the other night when the Spurs were in the lead. He missed a couple free throws. You got a chance to stop the bleeding there. Instead, you go in on a downer missing two free throws. And, Doug, a different story for Kobe Bryant in the first half tonight, following the one for three in game one. Six of 11 from the field. He had 13 points, three assists, three rebounds.